During the month of June, Mike and I are doing something a little bit different. So rather than our usual sermons, we're going to be sharing short reflections that are based on chapters from 2 Timothy, which is a letter in the New Testament. And each week we'll read a passage from a chapter and then we will reflect on what we've heard and focus on a particular question. So today we're looking at chapter three and asking the question, what is scripture? Before we get to that, imagine this. Imagine you are at home relaxing, reading the Bible while sipping a cup of coffee. Then you hear the doorbell go. So you go to the door with your Bible and your cup of coffee, you open it and you find no one there. Then you go to close the door, but as you go to close it, you see a small green alien with purple eyes and a furry tail on your doorstep. You're startled, but before you can ask what are you doing here, the little alien says, what is that in your hand? And you say, it's a Bible. And the little alien says, what is a Bible for? So you say, well, the Bible is an amazing book. There, there are, in fact, it's 66 books and there's history and there's law and there's proverbs and there's prophecy and there, there's there are biographies of Jesus and there is apocalyptic literature and there are many, many letters. And, and in the middle, there's a songbook called Psalms. The little alien looks very confused. So you continue to give more information. You say, well, There are many different translations. I read the NIV. It is the best version. We read it at church. It's great. But I'm also partial to a little bit of the message as well. And also there's NLT, ONESV, and RSV, NRSV, um, and so on and so forth. The little alien looks at you even more confused. So you think, okay, I'm going to have to go into some detail now. Little alien, look, it's like this. Some Christians believe that the Bible is inerrant, which means it's without error. Other Christians believe it's infallible, which means that it is trustworthy in all aspects of faith and practice. And there are some Christians that believe it's inspired, but complicated. Do you understand, little alien? The little alien says, yes, you are answering the question, what is the Bible? But I'm asking, what is the Bible for? Your mind goes blank. What is the Bible for? What is the Bible for? 
what is the Bible for? Hold on, little alien. I'm just going to look in the Bible at 2 Timothy. So you open up your Bible because you know there's something in that about what the Bible is for. Meanwhile, the little alien is laughing at you, does a backflip and then points to your other hand holding the coffee cup and says, no, what is it for? That's just a silly story to help us think about the fact that we sometimes answer the wrong question. We provide an answer that is for one question, but it's really we're answering another one. Putting the coffee cup aside, there's these two questions. What is the Bible and what is the Bible for? 2 Timothy chapter 3 answers the question, what is the Bible for? But many people go there to ask the question, what is the Bible? And I'm not saying that the question, what is the Bible, is not important. It's very, very, very important. But 2 Timothy chapter 3 answers the question, what is the Bible for? So I'm going to read 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 to 17. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worst, worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We can see in that passage that there are two parts. So Paul commends to Timothy himself as an example, and Paul also commends to Timothy the Holy Scriptures. What might be the connection between these two things? Well, Paul is wanting to show Timothy this is what a life lived following Christ looks like. And there is suffering and there is persecution too. But he also says to Timothy, look at the Holy Scriptures, because there you see hundreds, thousands of people seeking to live life with God. Learn from them what went well, what didn't go somewhere so well. Look at their example. So I think he's kind of saying the same thing. And of course, when Paul is talking to Timothy about the Holy Scriptures, he's talking about our Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, because, of course, the New Testament was still being written. So... When you look at the Old Testament, look at the examples, look at people seeking to live life with God, Timothy. Look at that. Look, I'll, I'll ask what, what, is, what is good about their way of life. Seek wisdom in their stories. Seek wisdom in their stories. But let's not forget our question, because our question is, what is scripture for? And this question is answered. So I'm just going to recap on verse 14 and 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it and how from in infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So what is scripture for? Scripture is for making you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but when I'm reading the Bible, I have a lot of questions. There are some things that I can't get my head around. And yet often it sends me towards Jesus. I have these questions that are ultimately only Jesus can answer. Look to the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. When you read the Bible, are, are you reading to be directed toward Jesus Christ? Are you reading so that you are made wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? What is the scriptures for? To make you wise, wise for salvation. And secondly, I'll recap verses 16 
verse 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we read the Bible, we look to the Holy Scriptures that we may be equipped for every good work. There should be an impact in our life. They should be equipping us. It should be like a toolbox, something that a resource that we go to to see how to live well in the world. Is your reading of scripture helping you to live well in the world, to live a more Christ-like life, to live a more loving life? Is that what your reading of scripture is helping you to, to do? So those two things, what is scripture for? It's to make us wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, and it's to equip us for every good work. If scripture is not doing that for you, you are reading it wrong. This is the criteria. The scriptures are wonderful, but you must read them so that they make you wise for salvation and read them so that they equip you for every good work. If your reading of scripture is getting in the way of that, then you are reading scripture wrong. So next time you come to the Bible, ask those questions. Ask of God, please, Lord, help me as I read this. Help what I read to make me wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And Lord, help me as I read this. Help what I read. Help the example of the people that I hear about, that I read about. Help their example to equip me for every good work as I seek to live in the world in the most loving and Christ-like way.